Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we're going to do a tiny epic unboxing of tiny epic dungeons. Just to let you know, this is the deluxe edition. I backed this on Kickstarter quite a while ago and it's just arrived today. Funny enough, right alongside Massive Darkness. And if you've backed both games and maybe you've got them both arriving, there's going to be a huge sort of juxtaposition between the two. This one is absolutely tiny and Massive Darkness is a huge, especially if you've got all the extras. To me, I feel like they're going to, you know, scratch the same itch. They're going to be a familiar feel when we're playing these games, but one of them doesn't take up most of my games room. I am a big fan of this game and game series, this tiny epic range. I've got quite a lot of them back then myself, and that's mainly because of a few reasons. Uh, the first one, and they now say on the back of the box, I don't know if they always have, but it is easy entry. So if you've got a new gamer in your life and you're trying to spend some time getting them involved in the hobby, this isn't, I wouldn't say it's a gateway game, but it's maybe the next step. Once they're interested in board games, this is not difficult to learn, won't be difficult to get into. On top of that, it is high strategy. This is a this is a big box game in a tiny form factor. There's going to be a lot of bang for your buck. You're going to get a lot of plays out of it and it's going to be quite deep. And that's my experience with the previous ones as well. And then the big one for me is the fact it is a small box. Guys, if you're going on a holiday, you can just chuck this in your bag, spend some time with it while you're away, or maybe you're just spending a lot of time in hotels and you want a companion. And this one in particular is one to four player, so you can play it single player and you don't even need to be with anyone. Best holiday ever. Anyway, enough jibber jabbering, let's get the seal off and see what's in. Right, let's open it up and I'll make my obligatory comment about how thick and nice the box is, because that's one thing with these tiny epic games, it's just really thick, it just feels high quality and I guess you, oh, it's really hard to bend this box, you just need a good sturdy box because it's got a lot of game in there, but it always has nice artwork and I always wonder what it's for, maybe it's a, you can use it as a dice tray, nevertheless, it's familiar across the range, they always have nice art in the box and it's always a thick, high quality box. You've got the adventures manual, which is going to be the rule book, let's just have a Oof, that is a lot of components. This is what I'm talking about. This is a big box game in a teeny tiny box. It is not short of components and it's full to the brim and that's the case with all of them. We'll have a quick flick through. The rules look full color. There's diagrams, pictures. You've got everything in here. It looks pretty deep, doesn't it? There's plenty to it. This bit even folds out. So you've got like a bonus page when you, just when you think it's over, there's some additional rules about the layer. Let's have a look. Does it have page numbers? Yeah, about 20 pages there with a little summary on the back. So as I said, it's deep. There's a lot to learn. It's a proper game. Let's have a look here. I think this is going to be the Kickstarter exclusive. So not everybody will be getting this. I'll have a look at the end, what we've got there. And then we've got, and this is the first time with the Tiny Epic range where it's coming with miniatures. Now it normally has those item meeples which can hold weapons, go on vehicles, even drive mechs, but they've ditched that this time in favor of miniatures. Actually, we'll look at these at the end, even even though that's the bit I'm most excited about. Double-edged sword though, isn't it? Because as a miniature painter, I now have to paint these. I didn't have to paint the item meeples before, but on the other side, I get to paint these. So we'll see what they look like. Let's just get everything out. We've got some cards, we've got some dice. We got dice. We got dice, Daddy. Got some monsters, baddies, heroes, stuff like that. And then just the empty box, move that to one side. Let's have a look at some of the components. We'll start with these, because these are these are the biggest piece and probably actually the most exciting. So it looks like you've got a bunch of baddies to fight. You get the dragon, you get the hydra, you've got the goblin king, you've got the pharaoh. What's on the back? Oh, ooh, the different acts, how you play the game, the gorgon, the seer, so beholder. Uh, yeah, exactly the same. And then these are the hero characters. So hopefully they've all got matching little miniatures, but you've got a half orc barbarian, an elf sorceress, a dwarf cleric. Art looks quite different there, doesn't it? Just noticing that. I like the art, no, don't get me wrong, but it's like a completely different style, I would say, against those two. So it's a bit interesting, a bit weird. That one's a bit more similar. Elf ranger, you get a wood elf, lots of elves, isn't there? Wood elf rogue, your human paladin. You've got an ancient wizard, a dwarf fighter, and then this is the torch tracker, isn't it? I think this is how you determine how far through the dungeon you are. It's kind of like the time track, isn't it? Something like that. So you've got a bunch of cards. Let's have a look at these while we're talking cards. Uh, we'll skim through these. I'm not going to show you each. I'll probably lay them out or something post-production so you can have a look. But you've got a bunch of monsters. You've got stabby goblins, boomy goblins, pokey goblins, shooty goblins. You get some weapons to play with. Lots of weapons, well, loads of equipment, armor, gloves, rings, robes, all sorts. Plenty of that. And then you've got a load of monsters that you need to fight. Absolutely ton, no, 
Yeah, handful. I was going to say absolutely tons, but I'd say that's just a handful. But different array of monsters to fight. You're going to get yourself the actual dungeon, and there's plenty of variety in the dungeon tiles. Probably a lot you need to learn on these symbols and exactly what they're going to do, but lots and lots of choice. It's going to add to the replayability. The cards feel high quality. The art looks nice. These are a good size card as well. They're not too small. The icons are plenty big enough to, you know, be able to see what they all mean, and you still get some artwork to give a bit of atmosphere. Then you've got some spells as well. So I guess your characters can cast various different spells during the game. And then you get the final, I think it's probably the entrance to the dungeon. So when you decide to start, this is the, probably the starting tile. Next up, you get a whole bunch of wooden pieces. They do this a lot, don't they, with the um, screen print. So you get some spider tokens. Oh, these are the monsters that, you, that were in there, weren't they? There were some spiders and ogre, various different ones all sorts of pieces some life tracking hearts and then you've got a lot of these i can't remember what these are for or even if i know but locked i guess rooms are locked and stuff like that but plenty i guess this, is this the beholder icons so these are chasing you around on the board as well you've got some lightning for some reason but lots and lots of little wooden screen printed tokens to play with I am also a fan of custom dice. I really like when they're properly embossed and got all the custom symbols and you're gonna get yourself four in this set. And these are beautiful. These look lovely, nice color choice as well, red and black. Uh, but yeah, four custom dice for playing the game. Looks nice, feels good and rolls perfectly. Before we get onto just spinning the miniatures because that's that's what we're here for. We will just have a look at this Kickstarter exclusive. If we're gonna open it and it looks like a bunch of extra pieces that you would already get. So I guess there's two new monsters. Look at these, some sort of fly stuff. Uh, you're gonna get an additional bit of instructions. You're gonna get, yes, a new big baddie, the demon lord and some sort of ghost, the lich, yeah, close enough. Uh, so you get two more monsters to fight and some new cards, which include a bunch of potions by the look of it. Not sure what these are for, but they definitely look like potions, don't they? You get a different sort of goblin, two different goblins. You get a wraith and a vampire imp as well as one new tile. So if you did back the deluxe edition, you're gonna get that. And if not, you can probably pick this up on their store and that sort of thing. So it won't be too hard to acquire. So last but not least, let's give these miniatures a spin and try and take them in. Now these are small. These are probably the smallest miniatures I know. That's not true. Seven continent is ridiculous. These are the next. They're probably bigger than Gloomhaven. Actually, I don't have that game, but these, these are pretty small. They're quite high detail. They could, some of them, especially like the Orc Barbarian, looks like it could be quite painful to paint. Some of the female characters that are extra slim could also be difficult. And again, yeah, the dwarves that, you know, they they are smaller and they're plenty of detail. They could be, these could look quite difficult to paint. They are small, depends how much detail you want to put on them. But luckily some of the detail looks stripped off on some of the miniatures, like the cleric just looks like neat armor and a couple of ropes around his chest, that sort of thing. Could be quite easy to paint. They all look nice. And if you're not a painter, these could be absolutely perfect just as they are. Although I might recommend just priming them. It'll pop out a lot of the detail for you. And that's, you know, there's very little skill to priming them. So it might be well worth a, a minute and a 10 pound investment just to pop out the detail a little bit more. I myself, am actually gonna go and paint these. So let us know in the comments below which character you would most like to see painted up on the channel. Guys, that is everything, unless we want to open the expansion. Should we do that? Should we? Should we? Yeah, go on. So the Tiny Epic Dungeons also has its own expansion. It's a little bit annoying for me because this is the only, at least it's the same width and height, but it's not the same depth. It's the only game by them that comes with an expansion that is a slimmer box, which, you know, it takes up less space. Maybe that's good, but it just doesn't sit right with me that it doesn't match exactly. You get a map on the inside. I don't know if that matters, but it looks cool. Once again, super thick box, even though it's teeny tiny and it's just an expansion and beautiful artwork. Inside, you're going to gain the adventure storybook, which is going to fill us in with the changes and the different bits of this particular expansion. I think it's the only expansion. They may or may not make more in the future, but I've never seen them actually add anything to these tiny epic games they bring 
bring out. But, oh, the maps in the back as well must mean something. Once again, it's a very similar setup. You're going to have the same bunch of components. You're going to get a bunch of new cards. You're going to get a bunch of new baddies. You're going to get a bunch of even more miniatures. can't believe how many miniatures come in this expansion. So it really increases the play replayability in giving you a bunch more characters. And then you get a few extra monsters in these silk screen tokens. Let's have a quick glance at the cards. You're going to gain yourself two new types of goblins, the goblin mechanic. There's a whole bunch of new equipment cards adding, yeah, one once again, more replayability, more items, more things you're going to be able to equip to your characters. There's two new monsters to fight while you're in the dungeon. And then there's also a handful of new dungeon tiles as well, just mixing it up and adding, you know, more variety to the actual dungeon you're exploring. And then the expansion adds a new mechanic using these cards. And I don't know what the mechanic is because I didn't read the rule book yet. I just unboxed it. But here we go. Something added, something a different, an entirely different mechanic being added to the game. Then the expansion is also adding some new sort of bosses to the to the dungeons fight you're going to get the tinkerer you're going to get the mind lasher you're going to get oh no these are these are playable characters back to elves you get an elf warlock you get a human oh how do you say that word psionic yeah why not i don't know what that is something out of star wars and then you get human adventure as well looks like a female indiana jones you get a guardian of order hey that looks like the game and game night thing so that's cool you get Oh, I was going to say another elf, but no, you get a dryad druid. I wonder if she can transform into anything. That'd be awesome. You get a halfling bard, and you get a human monk, something out of Diablo 1 expansion. Anybody who knows the name of that, leave it in the comments below. Then you get the wooden tokens with the printing on, uh, a couple of extra monsters. Uh, I don't know what these are for. I need to read the rule book. It's got A and B. And then another beholder, maybe, and so a couple of health trackers. And then, last but not least, we've got all the miniatures again. Once again, matching the style. They're basically the same quality as what comes in this normal box but you get a nice range this time i just realized that was didn't say padawan did it it said panda kin nothing to do with star wars but a massive huge panda creature we can play so i'm pretty sure that's my character going forth but yeah just, just adding a variety to the game and just letting you have a bit more replayability a bit bigger choice in characters um once again, yeah, some of them look particularly easy to paint and some of them are just going to be small with a bit too much detail, probably for myself to pick out quickly because I like to paint quick and when they're this detailed, it can slow you down a little bit. But once again, by all means, pick one of these characters. Let us know in the comments below and I will paint something up on the channel shortly. Thank you all ever so much for watching. Any questions, fire them off below. I'll be happy to answer. If I know, I'm going to play this now and see what I think. Thank you all ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon. This is the Deluxe Edition. I backed this on Kickstarter, Cockstarter, Cockblocker. It is, it's really thick. Ah, oh, and how dangerous and rubbish I am with knives. No, that can't be me. Son oh yeah, it can have been me. Son of a gun. Maybe it adds an extra player, I can't remember. Oh, what am I even talking about? Get all these red cards with different objectives and disc and think with... <laughs>